Andy Pettit, one of my favorite people that I've ever covered, announced, whatever the case may be. Uh, his number's up on the wall in Monument Park, number 46, and he joins us now. Andy, Michael, Don, and Peter, how are you? Hello. What's how up? You got? We're great. <laughs> oh, well, it's been a while since I've been on your show, Mike. I know. Well, where you been? Man, I just, I've just i been down hanging out in Texas coaching high school baseball. How's that going? Just grinding away. It was terrible. We had a rough year. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's been good. It's been good. It was good. Not a great year this year for us, but, uh, but it's been fun. I've, I'm obviously enjoying doing that. All right, I'm going to ask you this question because I do wonder this because you have you have so much to give in teaching pitching and you're doing it with high schoolers. Do you ever see yourself taking it to the major league level and doing it full time? Uh, I, I, still at this point, I would say I, I wouldn't think so. Um, you know, I, I am traveling now a little bit, you know, with the Yankees. Mm -hmm. So going around seeing our farm teams, which I absolutely love doing. Um, and then obviously this, uh, this came up, um, for me with, uh, Scott Brocious to be able to get down here with these high school kids. I uh, got 80 of the top high school players in the country down here. We're trying to evaluate them and, and we're going to be down here for almost a month with them and, uh, you know, break it down to, to 20, uh, here in a, in a month or so. And, and hopefully try to go win a gold medal in South Korea is what they're going to try to do. So this is this is the IMG Academy in Bradenton, Florida. It's the inaugural prospect development pipeline that Major League Baseball is doing. So it's you, Alan Embry, Gerald Laird, Scott Radinsky, Andy Stankiewicz, uh, Scott Brocious, Marcel Latchman, uh, a lot of people uh, with big league pedigree. So I guess, I guess that's going to be a lot of work, but also a lot of fun for you. It is. I mean, I, like I said, I, I enjoy being around uh, these young men. Um, not only try to teach them baseball, to try to help them develop as hopefully as young, you know, good, solid men. And um, also for me, the, the, the intriguing part was, and I'm not going to be traveling to South Korea. It's just going to be way too much for me to try to do as far as that. But just be part of something for Team USA. I, I never had an opportunity to play in the Classic. I wanted to every time it came up, but just my elbow uh, just I felt like that it would put my Yankee career in jeopardy if I went and competed at that level. And, you know, when the off season is when we do it or early in spring training. And I just was more concerned with, hey, the Yankees are paying me a salary. I should be ready for my, my New York Yankee, you know, team and, and start. So I wanted to so badly play. And if I would have felt great and my arm wouldn't have given me any issues, I would have. But just with the elbow injuries that I had and the time, that the classics came up, it seemed like I was always kind of scuffling with my bow a little bit. So, we never had an opportunity to do this. So this is that's really what's been so intriguing for me, uh, you know, to be able to come here and be kind of part of the Team USA deal. And you know, we hear a lot about starting pitchers don't go deep in games anymore. They don't have the ability to throw more than 100 pitches, and a lot of it's blamed on how they are when they're younger. Are you conscious of that? Working with these young kids to how they can build some stamina, how they're able to last longer in games and not not tax them so early in their careers <laughs> no no not that's not what we're, we're we're doing down here you know we get we get these kids and and uh i would love to see that and i would love to be able to to coach these kids and and to take care of them you know uh all the time but we're down here with these guys we're gonna we're gonna really really protect them um, you know, these, these kids all obviously have huge futures. Um, it's amazing. I mean, you're talking these kids are juniors out of high school this year, and most of these kids, as far as, far as the mound guys, are, are sitting in the low 90s and, and touching mid-90s, and a handful of these kids are uh, last week, I believe, down in Arizona at a perfect game event. Uh, I think a few of them hit 98 miles an hour. Wow. So. Um, you know, we're, we're going to protect these guys. We're going to probably be overcautious with them, um, and, and, but we're trying to evaluate them. And we'll have uh, nine games down here over the next three weeks, and we'll play games on Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays, and we'll evaluate them on those days. They won't throw more than three innings. The starters won't. And, uh, you know, there's going to be strict pitch counts as they move forward, even when they go into, uh, you know, the competition and, the, you know, for the gold. Um, and that, and that, in South Korea, will still really watch their pitch count. Just 
we want to make sure we take great care of these kids. And so uh, we're definitely not trying to build people's stamina up or stretch them out. But now we'll leave that more for the minor league coordinators, the minor league pitching coaches when they get in these organizations whenever they, they might get there or when they get to their college team. Yeah, they don't do it there either, Andy, which leads me to this question. Would you be able to pitch in today's major leagues where they don't want you to face a, a lineup for the third time where, you know, five and a third innings is really, really good and they don't care about wins or losses for a starter and their shifts and all that? Would it be difficult for you to accept all that? It would be difficult for me to accept it, and you could probably ask my managers that because <laughs> whenever, whenever I got pulled at 100 pitches and they told me that I had a, you know, and, I, hey, Joe Torre and Joe Girardi would be like, hey, I got guys in the bullpen that, that are that are throw harder than you and are better than you, and that's why we're putting them in this game. And that's hard for me to swallow and was hard for me to accept then. And it would have been really, really hard for me to accept if I would have had to do that on an, on an outing basis, you know. So, um, but, you know, that's where the game's gone and, and, and it's changed in, in that sense. And uh, I'm not a huge fan of it, but, you know, it's uh, – it seems to be working out, and, and, you know, we'll see. We'll see how, how it goes. You know, it's not too often talk about things changing of having a manager with no experience becoming manager of the New York Yankees, and that happened with Aaron Boone. Did you see that coming? Did you see that on his resume deep in his career that he'd eventually be a manager? No, I, you know, I didn't, and I, I didn't know Aaron extremely well at all. Obviously, I've had a chance to get to know Aaron, and it's great. I enjoyed being around him and the staff. I've had a chance to be up there plenty over the last two years and they have been so awesome to me and and uh love being around the staff and he has done a fabulous job uh but again that's you know it's another deal where you know things are changing and and you you wouldn't think obviously from if you were outside you know baseball or whatever looking in but uh they're doing it and 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 that's the way it's going and, and aaron has done a great job he's showing that that you can do it. You know, you don't need a whole lot of managing experience in, in today's game. And, and he's, uh, like I said, done a fabulous job. He's got great people around him, of course. And, of course, Larry's the pitching coach there and is handling the pitching. And, uh, obviously, I've spent a ton of time with Larry, and you're not going to find anybody better than that. So uh, they're doing a great job. I'm really proud of the team and the way they've played. Uh, with all the injuries and everything that has happened this year, just what a fabulous job they've done of just holding everything together. Now, let me ask you this. I know you're, you're really close with CC. You communicate a lot. He has struggled the last three mm -hmm. or four times out. What do you think's up? Do you think his knee might be bothering him? Yeah, I, you know, I've, I've talked with C uh, and, and just talked to him recently. I, man, I, I have been so busy. I haven't had a chance to really to follow him as closely as I, I usually try to like to do. Um, but he told me he's kind of, you know, scuffling with the feel a little bit of his pitches right now. That's going to happen. You know, I think he's healthy. Um, and, and he's going to be fine. <laughs> he's going to be fine. It's the same old, same old. You know, you just sometimes you lose your feel for your pitches. It's not always going to be there. And uh, and and probably I think you know it's usually I think more than anything sometimes it's just uh, we we kind of almost outthink ourselves maybe out there on the mound and just kind of step back and just if you don't have something let's don't try to force it you know uh, you know he's got all kind of weapons uh, cc has got great change up he throws you know his slider to both sides of the plate so he's uh he's gonna be fine he'll get it going again and and uh had it did had did have a chance to talk to him the other day and he's my he's my man man i'm always pulling for him and i love it i love it we got two more lefties with Hap and and paxton there and like i said i, I felt like i was doing a pretty good job earlier in the year following them but this last month and a half or so i've just been crazy busy and hadn't had a quite the chance to, to follow the big league club uh, like I've wanted to. I've also, like I said, I went to a few of the minor league uh, places now and seen some of the arms down there. I'm trying to keep up with all those guys too now. So it's uh, it's a full-time job of me trying to keep up with everybody where I got them. Uh, I got my second son and, and playing in the North Woods League in Wisconsin, so trying to watch every one of his games each night. He's in the bullpen. So, man, I got baseball on my phone, my iPad. I'm walking around sometimes with three three technical things trying to watch baseball games. Now, um, because of the, the commitment you have in Bradenton, will you will you make it up for the all-timers day on Sunday? I'm not going to oh, be able to be no. there. No. Uh, no. Yeah. I, I, uh, I'm not going to be able to be there for that. Uh, so I hate that, but not going to be able to get up there for it. 
Um, Mike, will you stop guilting Andy? I feel like everything uh, you're doing, you're watching enough games, I, or you guilt. thumb it up. He loves them. I mean, guys, look at the guy break. I'm, oh, man. Let me man, ask you, let me ask you what I always ask play. Mo, okay? <laughs> Mo's 49 years old, and I say to him, well, even on the air, I said, if you had a couple of weeks to get ready, could, and he goes, of course I could get major league hitters out. No problem. <laughs> when the Yankees are a little short in starting pitching, could you do it? <laughs> no, I could. I couldn't. Can could I get somebody out? So of course I could get somebody out. No, I couldn't. I couldn't. I could not go back and pitch. No. Do you want to? Do you miss it? Oh, oh I think I always. Yeah. Do, do I miss going out there? I think I told you this plenty of times. I miss. Yes, I miss. I miss. You know, I'd be lying to y'all if I told you I, I didn't miss going out there and taking them out and competing. I do miss that. I mean, a lot of people I talk to say they don't miss it at all. I do. I really do. And I don't know why, because it was such a grind for me, and, and I was ready to hang myself more than half the time, I feel like, after a bad outing and stuff like that. But uh, I loved it. I mean, I loved competing. I loved the work. I loved training and looking forward to each start. I, I, I did. I mean, that's just that's what I did for so long. So, yes, I, I, I did. I, I do. I do miss taking the mound. I do. I miss the travel and going sitting in the hotel room on the road when I'm not pitching and, you know, being away from the family. I don't miss that at all. But as far as wishing I could still run out there and didn't have to do all that every fifth day, I wish I was 30 again. I can tell you that much for sure. Well, good. Have you prepared CC when you talk to him about what life's going to be like when he retires? Uh, Oh yeah, yeah, and he's you know he's getting he's getting involved. He's doing stuff that is good. He's setting he's ready for that. He's setting things up, and 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 that's going to be that's good for him. Um, you know he's got his I know his podcast. I, th I believe he's doing something to set up some stuff for ESPN and stuff like that. So, man, you got to do that. You got to stay busy as a man. You got to feel productive, and and uh, so he's doing things right now. I know to kind of set that up. So. Well, we miss you here, Andy. Uh, good luck with the uh, the USA team. That sounds like a, a blast for you, and uh, always love talking with you. Okay, guys. Thank you all, man. Y'all take care. Say hello to the family. Thank you. That's Andy Pettit.